Today's topic, M Drive Part 2. In the first M Drive video, we talked about the resonant cavity thruster, Mr. Shire, his test results, Professor Yang's test results, and China's work developing the M Drive on board their space laboratory, Taigon 2. Now, in just a few minutes, we will be discussing three separate theories as to how the M Drive achieves thrust. But first, other interesting and relevant information. According to Mr. Shire, China appears to be now making use of the first and possibly second generation M drives for both commercial and military applications. And as of 2014 15, Mr. Shire has been collaborating with Gillo Industries Research to further develop their existing functioning flying car, the Skyquad, suggesting possible use of the M drive, which apparently they're due to reveal in 2019. Does this mean we're going to have flying cars? Hey Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going. We don't need roads. That's cool, but 2015 has come and gone. What about hoverboards? Hey, 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 stop! Little girl, little girl, stop! Look, I need to bore you. Hoverboard? If we are going to have flying cars, we will also have hoverboards. So, are we really going to have flying cars in our future? I'm sure that before too long we will have unconventionally propelled flying vehicles, though they may not look like anything that we have come to expect, and they will most definitely be equipped with artificial intelligence. Whether the M-Drive or something like it will be used in these vehicles or not is too soon to tell. Remember, this is only the beginning of the M-Drive technologies. Initially, the M-Drive had an acceleration problem whereby the microwaves within the resident cavity would undergo a large Doppler shift when accelerating, causing the microwaves to shift out of resonance, reducing thrust. Apparently though, they have solved the Doppler shift problem by introducing circularly polarized microwaves controlled by a feedback circuit that allows the drive to automatically compensate for the Doppler shift. In total, Mr. Shire has three separate drive configurations, the 1G, the 2G, and the 3G, which is a superconducting design and apparently it's capable of considerably more thrust. However, currently it also requires considerably more complex and expensive equipment to operate and maintain. Here's something of interest. In February of this year, Mr. Shire gave a presentation at the UK Defence Academy in Shrivenham, England, where he discussed future capabilities of the M-Drive with particular emphasis on the importance of global defence in response to the development of the M-Drive technology. Now, let's talk about NASA's interest and involvement with the resonant cavity thruster. In 2014, at the NASA Johnson Space Center, Dr. Harold White and his team were well into the process of testing both drives, CANA and M-Drive, having achieved multiple positive thrust results with an average thrust ratio of 1.2 millinewtons per kilowatt using microwave frequencies. See the descriptions for links. Since then, Dr. White and his team have published two papers, one of which, the first one, has already passed peer review, meaning that their work has been carefully scrutinized by trusted independent scientific peers who have concluded their work to be sound. The two published papers are 1. Measurement of impulsive thrust from a closed radio frequency cavity in vacuum. 2. Anomalous thrust from an RF test device measured on a low thrust torsion pendulum. It's noteworthy that Dr. White and his team are the same ones who also worked on the Alcubierre White Warp Drive, where they again had success. Elsewhere in the world, in July of 2015, an aerospace research group at the Dresden University of Technology, led by Dr. Martin Tejmar, had built and tested their version of the resonant cavity thruster, having also achieved a positive but much smaller thrust result of only 20 micronewtons at 700 watts. 
though he stated with a very low Q factor. His paper is entitled Direct Thrust Measurement of an EM Drive and Evaluation of Possible Side Effects. Not to overlook the research of others, in total, there are at least eight teams and or individuals working on the M drive, such as Burka Ulian, a Romanian electrical engineer who has built, tested, and achieved a positive thrust result of 4.3 millinewtons per kilowatt, also using microwave frequencies. See the description for links to his work. Now, if there was nothing to the drive and the inventor's claims, one would think then, as soon as everyone built, tested, and of course discovered not a bit of thrust, that would be the end of the device and the inventor's claims. Right? Not so fast. It's not as simple as that. It's moments like this that we scratch our heads and realize that reality is often more strange and fascinating than science fiction. For a device that is believed to be violating the laws of physics, there sure is a lot of interest surrounding it, and that's interesting, isn't it? Furthermore, the fact that the drive does not require any conventional propellant to achieve thrust makes it also very intriguing, doesn't it? By now, it's pretty obvious that the drive does indeed appear to function as described, and that Mr. Shire has stumbled upon a new discovery. What that discovery is, is yet to be revealed. I don't think anyone really knows just what is taking place within the drive, yet. So how does this strange and fascinating drive function? There are three parts to understanding how it works. First, there's the basics of configuration, followed by second, theory of how the microwaves interact and with what do they interact with which, third, requires some understanding of the fabric of space. Essentially, microwaves, which are photons, are emitted into the resonant cavity chamber, where they literally bounce all around, saturating the entire cavity, but mostly they bounce and resonate between the two ends of the cavity, the wide and the narrow ends. To a large degree, the size, shape, resonant frequency, and efficiency determines the drive's ability to achieve thrust and in what direction it moves. For several reasons too lengthy to explain in this video, we have chosen to focus on three separate theories and for really good reasons. Dr. Harold White's quantum thruster theory, Dr. Mike McCulloch's quantitized inertia theory, and the paired photon theory by the three scientists, Professor Artu, Professor Ierke, and Engineer Patrick. These are the three theories we think comes closest to describing what's actually taking place within the M drive. First, let's start with some basic understanding of the fabric of space, which is critical to all three theories. You see, space is not an empty void of nothingness. In fact, space is filled with radiation of every form and every energy. There's a great video by Veritasium called Empty Space is Not Empty. Again, see the description for links. In Dr. White's and Dr. McCulloch's theories, the background of space is similar to the current idea of the quantum vacuum, which is that the fabric of space is made up of oscillating fields. These oscillations are what we refer to as particles, charges, and spins. Photons, which are light particles, are both waves and particles. We here at Astron X postulate that particles actually flip between the two states, wave and particles. With regards to Dr. White's theory, simulations were done that treated the quantum vacuum, that is, the fabric of space, as an electron-positron plasma. The results of the simulation seem to match what we actually observe. Dr. White proposes that the M-drive generates a net force on the quantum vacuum in a similar fashion to that of an acoustically based asymmetrical resonant cavity thruster in air or water, such as the A-drive. Interestingly, the idea that the M-drive works similarly to an acoustic resonant cavity thruster is also found in the paired photon theory, which we'll get to in a moment. Dr. McCulloch's theory is a model for inertia and is entitled Modification of Inertia by a Hubble Scale Casimir Effect. His theory states that when any mass accelerates, 
it experiences a radiation pressure that resists its acceleration. According to Dr. McCulloch, this is the inertia of that mass. The radiation pressure resistance is referred to as UNRWA radiation. Dr. McCulloch says that the thrust of the M-drive can be predicted fairly well by using his model for inertia, which assumes that the inertial mass of the photon is caused by the UNRWA radiation, whose wavelengths have to fit exactly inside the cavity so that the photon's inertial mass is greater at the white end. To conserve momentum, a new force appears which pushes on the cavity towards the narrow end. The predicted force is similar to the thrust observed. Therefore, Dr. McCulloch's theory implies that the M-drive is actually an open system which interacts with the fabric of space. Now, in the paired photon theory, which states that the fabric of space consists mostly of photons and perhaps a few other massless particles, which oscillate out of phase with respect to one another, such that their electromagnetic components cancel each other out, rendering them undetectable. Yet, their energy and momentum remain. That is, they still exist. According to their theory, in the thruster's cavity, microwaves interfere with each other and invariably some photons will end up co-propagating with opposite phases. At the destructive interference, electromagnetic fields cancel. However, the photons themselves do not vanish for nothing but continue in propagation. These photon pairs without a net electromagnetic field do not therefore reflect back from the metal walls but instead escape the resonator entirely. By this action, momentum is lost from the cavity which, according to the conservation of momentum, must give rise to an equal and opposite reaction. Now, something of importance to note is that the theory is not saying that the M-drive is merely a photon drive which has an extremely tiny thrust but instead works by the exchange of momentum between the paired photons, the fabric of space, and the thruster. Basically, these three scientists have theorized that by the mechanism of these out-of-phase paired photons, the M-drive exchanges momentum with space and thus experiences a much greater thrust than would be expected from a pure photon rocket, producing, in fact, an exhaust an exhaust comprised of particles not directly detectable. Therefore, if noticed, all three theories are basically saying the same thing, but in different ways. Each one theorizing that the M-drive works by interacting with the fabric of space. Ultimately, we know that space is indeed made up of stuff. Stuff that we do, can, and know how to interact with. This fact is punctuated when we rapidly try to accelerate and decelerate. Like the Alcubierre white warp drive, the M-drive is a relatively simple machine. And also like the warp drive, what appears to be taking place within and or around the resident cavity has many scientists and non-scientists scratching their heads, typically saying one of two things. That's impossible! Or, wow, that's incredible! The main reason for opposing viewpoints and controversy is this. You see, as far as we know, of course excluding what we don't know, nothing can produce thrust from what is essentially nothing, confined radio waves, kinetic energy and all, with no apparent exit to produce the imbalance of forces necessary to generate thrust. Therefore, initially, the M-drive was looked at with great suspicion, because many believed that the drive could not achieve thrust due to the lack of exhaust ports. Since the drive did not exhaust expel the microwaves upon initial examination, the drive appeared to be violating the law of conservation of momentum. Combine that with the lack of understanding and even misunderstanding, many went crazy, completely throwing out the idea prematurely. The question must be asked, why hasn't the story ended in a puff of rigorous scientific testing? As already stated, the drive does indeed appear to be producing a thrust and without the need for conventional propellants. More importantly, it appears that there is indeed something intriguing taking place within the drive that we are not yet fully aware of. 
What that something is, for many, is a hotly debated topic, since no one at the moment is absolutely sure of what's actually taking place. Only theories. Of all the scientists who are and have been working on these drives, they are no fools. They know full well that the drive is producing a thrust. It is up to them to finish their work conclusively. So, in its current state, what is the M-Drive good for? This is only the beginning. For the moment, we know that it's good for propelling small satellites. That said, what I can tell you is this. According to some of the scientists working on the M-Drive, with enough power and a really high Q-factor, the drive would be capable of assisting a manned spacecraft, though no one has put any effort into doing just that. Yet. That said, it is our understanding that, ultimately, the M-Drive will be primarily used for hovering and relatively light acceleration. It will not replace other methods of accelerating a craft. Through further testing and development, and getting past the initial shock, we could one day soon read that science has made several breakthroughs in our understanding of X, Y, Z, and maybe even G. After all that we have discussed, does the drive really work as described? You decide. For me, I definitely know it produces a thrust. If you're scientific in your approach, mechanically inclined, you too can build and test your own drive, confirming these facts for yourself. As stated in our Warp Drive video, interestingly, if all we did right now was to assemble what we already know, plus what we're discovering, we would be amazed at what we already know and can do. Well, that concludes this video. We want to thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for our upcoming videos. Till then, keep wandering about space.